Hey guys, and what we're going to cover in this video is my new version of the MTMM or multi-trait multi-method, a class assignment that I use in my structural equation modeling class. So let's get started. In this first part here, we're going to do this in Markdown. What, we're bas what I've got open basically is the assignment and the lecture notes. And the very first thing, oops, that's lecture notes, is let me tell you a little bit about the data. And in the lecture, we went over having meaning and purpose as our traits and for our methods using the meaning in life questionnaire and the purpose in life questionnaire. In this example, we'll add one more measurement for our methods side and do the seeking of no edit goals test. And the mapping of traits and methods are as follows. Right? So we've got uh, several questions from each scale for meaning and several questions from each scale for purpose. And then for methods, the M questions are on the MLQ, the S questions are on the song, and the P questions are on the pill. So to get started, I have to do the simple stuff. Like I'm going to open Rio as my data import library. And I'm just going to say, okay, I'm a master data set. Import into Rio is the assignment data set. Now, if I want to, I can look at this just to make sure that I can see all the questions. Cool. The other libraries that I'm going to need is at least Levon, because that's the point of this class, and maybe Simplot. Which is taking a very long time to load lately. <laughs> all right. And so that's all I need for this first section, import all those data um, the data and the libraries. Okay, now in this section we're going to use the Weidemann steps and we're going to build, analyze, and summarize model one. So I've really been trying to focus on this kind of four-step procedure. Build, which is uh, creating the model, analyze using CFA or SIM, summarize, and then diagram. In these models the diagrams are are helpful but maybe not by this point in the semester, you don't necessarily need to see them, but we could diagram as well. But the assignment says build, analyze, and summarize. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm going to call this uh, step one dot model. <clears throat> and let's see. So in the first model, what I need to do is correlated traits and correlated methods, right? And so they're labeled here model one correlated traits and correlated methods. Well, I can already kind of see these methods and traits separately. Let me scroll down a little bit further here. Kind of how this model works. Okay. So instead of making you suffer through me typing very slowly, I'm going to copy this from the lecture because it's effectively a very similar model and kind of break down what uh, is happening in this model. Okay. So the first thing I need to do is list out, I can do methods or traits first. So we would say MLQ, and the pills, so this is our methods side. Then we're going to have the traits. Okay. And then we have to do our covariances. So let me come up here and copy this for our traits. Start there. Okay. So for meaning, we do equals tilde to a um, latent variable. We've got MLQ1, MLQ2, 5, 10, okay. and then our, oops, no, not a comma, song, and then the pill. <clears throat> so we're not using all the columns here. And then for purpose, so we're going to rearrange this in just a second for the other half. We're going to do M3 plus M4 plus M6 plus M8 plus M9. A lot of purpose questions here. S2 plus S8 plus P3 plus P20. Great. So that is this half. It's a little different than the... Um, Class example because it has the song included as well. Now, 
I want to then add the questions here for the tra uh, methods half. So it looks like we're using M. We, we can just copy these actually. Work smarter, not harder, right? Oh, equals tilde. Too much, too much regular regression. <laughs> And then let's do a second half here. So here's the meaning questions. It doesn't really matter what order you put them in. I swear to you, it takes longer to set these models up than it does anything else. Done. Okay. Now I have to fix our cross covariances. So I've got MLQ times meaning and um, the pill times the meaning. And I need to add our song here, tilde tilde zero times meaning, okay. that sets the, the covariance between the methods and the traits to zero. And we want that in all of our models because we don't cross correlate these things. Okay. And so that should be step one. Let me make this a little bigger so you can see the whole thing at once. All right. So we've got our method side, our traits side, and then turning off the cross correlations. So that's build, analyze here, step one dot fit, let's do CFA, okay. And our model equals our step one dot model, okay. Data is, I just call it master, okay. And I can't remember, I think orthogonal, no, this one we turn on standardized on the latent variable. Okay. Orthogonal equals true is a bifactor model. Run that, oops. <laughs> Run both, rather, sorry, boop. Okay. And it says I've typed something wrong. <laughs> what have I done wrong here? Let's look. Mm -hmm. Well, I got all my question names correct. I've got some extra L questions in here for the um, life purpose questionnaire, but okay, let's look at this error one more time. Probably not a bad thing to get an error. I'm missing observed variables in the data set. Okay, so maybe I've included a question that doesn't exist. Normally it tells you which one it is. <laughs> so, oh, oh, here we go. Forgot my M here. M8? Got excited, so. Okay, so that's why it says this is constant here because I put in plus eight. All right, let's try this again. Troubleshooting. Okay, ran with no problems. Very cool. So let's look at a summary now. Um, okay. And we want to kind of look for the same things we normally always look for, right? So this step is the one that's going to break usually if if it's gonna break at all. And I didn't really turn everything on, so let's turn everything on. So we do R square equals true, fit measures equals true, and um, standardized equals true. Although, you know, we've already standardized on the latent variable, so we can only see part of part of the model. Okay. Didn't get any error messages. I would scroll down to the bottom, make sure all my variances are positive, make sure my R squares are less than one, Make sure all of my correlations that are there are less than one and oh boy, that bad boy is high. I'm amazed this model runs, honestly, because the purpose is real, right? So meaning and purpose here are very highly correlated and it's questionable that those should be considered different traits. Okay. Otherwise, we're looking pretty good. Okay, let's look at our fit indices. So this is a pretty good fitting model because everything's pretty highly correlated. So because this model worked okay, we could probably continue with those steps. Okay. So let's do the methods only model now. Okay. And I'm not gonna reinvent the wheel. I'm gonna copy. Okay. It's a lot of code. So let's create step two now. And this is the methods only model. Okay. So we just wanna take out all the traits. And because my 
brain is only good at remembering things for so long during the day. Let's just scroll down and make sure that's what we're doing. So no traits, correlated methods. So in the example from the lecture, right? Oops, where did step two? Oh, we had already run step two. Let's scroll up. Uh, we had done traits only. So we have the, um, I'm sorry, methods only. <laughs> ah, meaning uh, the MLQ and the pill. And so that's what we kind of compared down here. So it looks like we're pretty good here. So we're adding the song. So this is methods only, so no traits, methods only. Let's see how this works. Okay, no error messages. It's a good sign. And then we scroll down and we flip through all of this. Um, I will tell you, it's probably fine. Okay, Whew. not measuring some questions very well. Just saw that, but in general, nothing super weird. Standard errors look okay, meaning the one is not super large, right? Um, so then the question becomes, how do these compare? But we're actually going to do that here down at the bottom. So I'm just going to build on my models and then compare them. Okay. Now this is a perfectly correlated traits model. So I'm going to copy again the first model. Because everything is compared to that first model. And perfectly correlated traits. Well, perfectly correlated traits means that the uh, meaning, tilde tilde, and purpose are perfectly correlated. Okay. Well, then just to make sure, that's basically what we did before. Because okay. we haven't added any new traits, only new methods. All right. So let's see how that runs. I can just run the whole block, but then I usually sometimes will miss error messages. So I like to run my CFA all by itself just so I don't miss any error messages. All right, okay. This is going to be a good fitting model because our, our we already saw that our methods, uh, sorry, um, trait correlation was very high. So this model will probably fit well, which is not a good sign. <laughs> okay, so here it's set to one. Everything looks pretty good. Don't see any problems with the model. Okay. And by problems, I mean the Haywood stuff. Um, negative error variances, perfect uh, correlations over one, that kind of stuff. Okay. Last model. So let's build, analyze, and summarize the uncorrelated methods model. Okay. We'll take our original model and we're going to uncorrelate the methods. So we'll do MLQ tilde tilde zero times the pill, and then the MLQ tilde tilde zero times the song, and then one more pill tilde tilde zero times song, and that should get us step four. And we can come down and just look, make sure, and that's what we added last time. So let's rename all these step four. You can call these whatever, but remember we like to stick with this model and fit coding just so that we know which one's which. Although I am still prone to using the wrong one in my pictures. <laughs> okay, no error messages, that's good. And this model we'd actually like to be good as well. And that implies that our methods are uncorrelated, which means they're each contributing something, we hope. So everything looks nice. Um, you can see now that these are zeros. That's what we changed. Okay. Well, now that we have all that, what does all this mean? Let's compare. Okay. So we're going to use Cable here from the Knit R library to help us build something. Because we already have Knit R open by using a markdown document. And I'm going to change here where it says 1 to 5 okay, into something more appropriate. And I've got the example here on line 177. And um, this is just an example, honestly, of how to make one of these tables. I really like using this format because it allows me to kind of be really flexible and I don't have to follow all the, all the rules when it comes to um, 
data frames. <laughs> so I like doing it in matrices, but Broom is a really good option that you can use to tidy up stuff. Um, Flex table is a really cool table package as well that you could basically do what I'm doing here, but instead put it through flex table. Um, cable's just kind of nice because we already have knit R. And so what I do is I make myself a table to print and I say, okay, give me a matrix of NAs and I'm going to fill those in as I go. And, um, the nice thing about making an NA to start is you're not picking a specific um, type of data. So remember that matrices have to have all the same type of data. And generally these are characters, but the whole point is to print this out. So it's okay if we mix characters and numbers because it'll all coerce back into characters. But I'm gonna start by just making an, uh, an empty table with four rows and six columns because I have four models and one, two, three, four, five, six variables I'm interested in. We make it as big as we need, honestly. And these are just the column heads, column names, so that I can get a table that prints out with some names so I know what is going on. Well, the first one I've given you the example of here, so I'm just going to copy it. And in this first row, so table print one comma nothing means give me the first row. I've already told you what you should put as the model. So now I just need to fill in chi squared degrees of freedom, yada, yada. And so I'm going to just paste that so it's and then hit enter so you can kind of see okay. so it's fit measures chi square df rim c srmr cfi just in the same order i have them up here and then we do that for the rest of them so it's, i it's giving you the structure of the model and just letting you fill this in step three and Step four. We'll turn the whole block. We've got our nicely formatted table. Now, it does print with like a bazillion decimals. I could round this whole thing if I wanted to to make this a little bit easier. Now, we really wouldn't want to round degrees of freedom, but you know. Let's see how that looks. That works. Yeah, that's much easier, but we should probably stick actually with three degrees of freedom. I'm sorry, three decimals, and I'll explain why here in a second. The hardest part's knowing where to put the uh, parentheses, right? So, and generally my answer is just try it, and if it doesn't work, you put it in the wrong place. Let me just rerun the whole block. There we go. A little easier to read now. Okay. So we've got our little table, although it is kind of, why is it printing so large? I don't know. But let's see, if, I was trying to see if I can get the table and the text here together, but it's printing rather, rather huge. Hmm. Maybe I pop it out. That might work. Oh, nope. <laughs> no, that won't work. Okay. So using CFI change above, what do our results suggest? So we'll have to just kind of scroll up and down a little bit here, but that's okay. For each step, note if the models are different and if that supports or does not support convergent and divergent validity. Okay. So model one versus two is convergent validity. And so we'll compare our CFIs here, one versus two, and you want model one to be better. Okay. So that supports convergent validity. All models are different supports, I really should say actually which way this is. Model one is better. And that supports with an S convergent validity. Because okay. remember that model one here is our correlated traits and correlated methods. And then model two is no traits. So if model two is better than model one, or if they're equal, that basically implies that it's only the methods that are driving it. So that's no good. So we've got some convergent validity, meaning the traits are necessary okay, for the model to work. Now model one versus three is divergent validity of the traits, meaning that these are different traits right, from each other. And that's no good, they're exactly the same. So um, model one and three are the same, which does not support divergent validity 
on the traits. Okay. Implies merpus. Okay. Meaning meaning and purpose are the same. Now the last one is model one versus model four, which you do want them to be equivalent, okay. which implies that the methods are uncorrelated from each other. And uncorrelated methods are good. That means they're, they're not overlapping. Um, you don't, you can use them each in maybe a research design because they're each contributing something to the latent variable. Maybe we'd have to look at the loadings, right? Um, it's not like these two scales measure the exact same thing. Now there is a difference between models here because a 0.01 change would be indicate difference in models. So model one is slightly better than model four. which does not support divergent validity of the methods. Okay. So we're not doing that well. <laughs> now, I, I'm interested here on in what it is about model four. So I might actually scroll up and let's just look at model four. Okay. Well, model four is where we set them all to zero. So we actually would want to look at model one to see where they're correlated differently from zero. Okay, so let's scroll down here. And we want to look here. Okay. So the issue here is between the MLQ and the song. The pill and the MLQ do not really have a correlation here after we account for the tra traits. And the meaning and the, I'm sorry, the pill and the song don't really have a correlation, again, after we account for the traits, because um, in real life, like if you just ran a correlation matrix, they do have, they are highly correlated. But the song and the MLQ are still pretty correlated after controlling. And so that is the one that is not separate. And so there's, there's no divergent validity there. All right, down here towards the bottom. So let's print out the parameter estimates. Uh, step one dot fit. Whoops, helps if you spell fit correctly. And then I'm actually gonna see if it'll let me view them. The other day it was not working quite right on my Mac here. But, I don't know, today it's working fine. Okay. And let's see if we can answer these questions. Are the parameter estimates for the traits higher than the ones for the methods? All right, so let's sort here by right hand side. And so are the ones for the traits higher than the method? So here's the trait. Okay. Well, it's higher than the method. Okay. And then um, we can also filter out here to only equals tilde to make this a little easier. And I'm sure there's a code way to do this, but you know, visually it's pretty clear. This one's higher, Oop, not higher, not higher, higher. Oh, um, I may have gotten off here higher, right, uh, that's the p-value, I want the estimate, sorry, am I looking at p this whole time, oh good grief, I also forgot to turn on standardized estimates, now we could just look at the regular estimates as well, it can go either way, there we go, all right, so we had filtered out and just did equals tilde, and then we sorted by the right hand side. And now if I look at the actual estimate here, or I could come over, standardize on latent variables the same. I could look at standardize all, but it's pretty much gonna tell me the same answer. So higher, not higher, not higher, not higher, 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 not higher. So we want the second one here, the one that's on the trait, to be higher than the one that's on the method. And it's like half and half if you go through all of these. Okay. So that's not good. It's a bit mixed. Half are, half aren't. Okay. So what does that imply? That implies that some of the variance is due to methods and not to tricks. And so that idea is that like um, you would like all of the all of the variants really to be accounted for by the traits, or then maybe only a little bit left over for the methods because there will be some measurement error, 
error no matter what. Um, but we really like the loadings, the strong latent variable to be tied to the trait and not the method. All right, examine the correlation between traits. All right, so now we do want tilde tilde. Correlation between traits, so meaning and purpose here. It's 0.991. Does do the correlations or does the correlation support divergent validity? Uh, nope, that score is very close to one. You want it closer to zero. I don't know that we ever expect these to be truly uncorrelated because otherwise why are they in the same model or on the same scale but you want this to be closer to zero than one for sure and you might have a specific confidence interval that you're uh, interested in so i'd like them to be less than 0.5 right so i would look at the confidence interval out here and um make sure that that is less than 0.5 okay and that confidence interval actually is slightly over one, which is, is, is bad because this is standardized. Okay. Um, and correlations don't go over one. So examine the correlation between methods. Do those correlations support, support divergent validity of the methods? All right. So that's mostly, it's kind of in a couple of places. So the MLQ and the song are pretty highly correlated. Not high, that's, well, yeah, it's a large correlation after accounting for all the traits, so that's no good. Our pill and our song are pretty uncorrelated, and our pill and our MLQ, it's up here, also pretty uncorrelated. So, 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 pill and ML, pill is okay. MLQ and song are um, correlated. I won't put a judgment on this at 0.5, which is not close to zero. <laughs> that I think we can assume. So half supported. Okay. And so that's how you can interpret and look at an MTMM um, and answer these questions. Now the first four steps kind of answer these convergent and divergent kind of questions, but you can also almost answer the exact same steps by looking at just the parameter estimates, which is really handy if one of these models blows up, right, um, is by examining uh, and comparing parameters. And so this gives us essentially the same answer, that it's kind of a mixed bag, like the method, you know, the, tr the traits appear to be important, but not for all of them. And the methods are somewhat uncorrelated, but then the, the traits are too highly correlated. So we should scrap this whole model and come back with a kind of a one factor model um, to see if that works, but you can't do a multi-trait multi-method on one factor. <laughs> so that's why we split this into Merpus to kind of show you how one of these models worked. Right. So that is the MTMM class assignment.